Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Underrail. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you chose to join me today as we c continue talking here to the Council of the SGS Southgate Station and tell them exactly what happened in our big, big adventure, uh, being the pawn of Tanner, that apparently now is has been revealed to be some kind of alien or something, I'm not really sure what he is, and nobody really knows what he is, but uh, we were just telling Hezra that we, um, were, we went to the Deep Caverns because uh, the uh, shortists took the cube, and of course that meant we had to go after them and go after the cube, and the cube was with short, but we haven't told them yet that yet, so let's see what he says about that whole thing. Better, better, says, says old Jonas. Would you stop that, Jonas? <laughs> Oh, it seems like everyone wanted this object, including the Enigmatic Institute. Why did Chortis send it to the Deep Caverns? What do you have? What do they have there? They have Chort. What? What is Chort? It is one ugly creature, one giant, disgusting, mutated mass of flesh with slimy tentacles sprouting from it. Everyone is silent, exa exa exchanging stares. I killed it and returned the object to the faceless. You got a real bear, a mighty. Mighty boulder sitting between your legs, says old Jonas. How do you even walk, son? Fascinating, says Ezra. You have you have seen amazing things in such a period of time, and you leave to tell the tale. But this tale presents more questions than answers, and we still don't know who Tanner truly is, and what he was going to do with the faceless device where, where uh, and where he is now. Well, there's a thing or two I've learned that might shed some light on who Tanner really is, and also where he is. Tell us, Draco. I've met this humanoid creature, which calls itself Ram Umbra. We've met in deep caverns for the first time, but it seems we were both involved in all these important events regarding the faceless object. Can you describe it? You mean the, the creature? Oh, yeah. He is lean and tall, about as tall as Tanner, and has a prosthetic arm and a leg. He wears a metallic looking mask, and instead of eyes, he has uh, four lenses. One uh, other striking feature is that he has six digits on each of his ends. As tall as Tanner, mask. Yeah, he's a powerful individual, even capable of things like instant teleportation. The technology he wields is far more advanced than anything we've seen. Yeah, go on. So, he and Tanner seem to be of the same species, from what I understood. But Ram Umbra wants to assassinate him, and he seems to have been trying to find him for a long time. Now that he has finally discovered him, Tanner slipped away and fled to North Underrail. So that's your... So what you're trying to say is... Tanner has been posing as a human in order to hide from whatever the hell it is, assassin, and now bolted as soon as this Ram Ember sniffed out, sniff him out? Everything makes sense. The faceless object, Tanner's appearance, the stasis cell in his room, his departure. We still don't know what he was gonna do with that gizmo, but I get, I can bet the five, the five hair on my head. It's related to him not wanting to get zapped by his fellow kinsmen. Gentlemen, I think a long meeting is ahead of us. Thank you for everything, Draco. The rest of us have long discussion ahead. You, on the other hand, might want to go rest. Some, get some rest. You've done more than enough. Afterwards, you should come to my office. Okay. So let's get some rest, and then... I, I, I kind of wanted to go kill Tanner, though. That That's the thing that I wanted to do. Can I sleep? Or did I rest already? I might have rested already. I can sleep. Let's check the computer. I never did check the computer again, though. I mean, I did off-camera, but... Faceless from public feed. The faceless have been spotted on multiple locations throughout on the rail that are using a large tunnel. Yeah, that's the same one. Yeah. I never received more email. Man, not even spam. Okay, well, uh, let's go back to uh, Vera's uh, office. And from there, I guess, I guess they, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I really want to kill Tanner, though. Hmm. I thought that was gonna be like a second boss or something. So how's it going? While there is a, sl a still, s uh, while there are still signs of concern intertwined with her expression, you notice more confidence and resolution in her stare and speech. Did you rest well, Draco? Yeah. Well, yes, I did. Do you know why I, I wanted to speak to you? You wanted to ask me something? Yeah. To be more specific, I wanted to offer you something to you. How would you like to become one of the South Gate Station counselors? Why me? South on the rail hasn't been this turbulent ever since the breakup of Biocorp. Earthquake, faceless invasion, United Stations integration, and increasing conflicts between Underrail, Protectorate, and Underrail Protectorate and the free drones, to mention but a few. 
Uh, after you left, the council discussed you and your recent first-hand experience throughout South Underrail. We feel that uh, we feel what you know would be a great use to our station. That is why we offer you this position, and it is something upon which we all agreed. You don't have to answer right away. Think about this. You will most likely take over some of Tanner's duties, some of the ones you could manage. At first, then, well... We'll get into the details and specifics after you give me a positive answer. Do you want to become a consular, Draco? Uh... Sure. I accept. I want to become a Southgate... Oh, it ends the game. Oh, that's a... No. I will have to think about it. Certainly. There is no pressure on you. We simply feel you would, have, would be a valuable contribution to the council. I will be here once you've made your decision. I understand. Uh, so, let's see... See you later. Okay, I probably that's gonna be the end of the game, but first, I have something to do. I have something very important to do here, guys. We need to go to the platform and barracks and lower undergrades, whatever that is, and go to, if I remember correctly, uh, north under rail, that would be Core City, and then from there we're going north. Keep going north. I think that's how it goes, but I might be wrong. Let's see how much. Oh! So you need to make a decision, huh? Okay, I think SGS is good. I think they're good. Let me save the game and let's see both endings. How about that? I don't know how long it's gonna take each ending or if however it's gonna be, but let's go on this one. I think this if if I if I would go with a single ending, this would be it. And then I have a quick save to come back to. Do I have a quick save? It's not appearing down there. Hmm. Anyway, let's see. This would be the ending. As before and during the faceless blockade, it was still business as usual in Junkyard. The balance of power between the Black Eels and Scrappers held. Oh, I can't bypass this? I can. The extraction of the old of the old world junk and its shipment across the South Underrail via the docks ensured that the town would survive in the foreseeable future. Good. Awesome. So they're they're working. We did good things there. With both borrowers and the rat, Rathound King out of the way, Hathorians extended their hunting grounds and grew their community. Awesome. Where we pass, we do good things. I wanted to do that. Let's see what happens. Though you took care of the faceless problem, rail crossing's troubles had only just begun. Since they lost too many people during the faceless attack, they had to seek, seek help from the Protectorate. The train carrying the armaments, ammo and general supplies eventually arrived safely due to your help. This allowed them to survive multiple attacks mounted by the United Ironhead clans and of the surrounding tunnels, but having smelled weakness, the bloodthirsty bandits kept on with their offensive. In time, Rail Crossing was forced to ask for more direct assistance from the Protectorate. During the final battle, a platoon of Protectorate soldiers arrived in the nick of time, repelled the invaders, clash chasing them down and killing most of them, thus saving Rail Crossing. The price of this, of course, was Rail Crossing giving up its independence and integrating into the United Stations. I guess that's fair. I mean, it couldn't survive. This is Forge. We have never been in here. It's clearly Forge. Despite dozens of troops with all manners of weapons being thrown at it, the seemingly immortal Beast of Foundry continued its rampage. The stubborn miners refused to collapse the passages, fearing the whole city would be permanently out of work. The beast eventually broke through and entered the city proper, followed by a swarm of bladelings. The foundry guard fought bravely, but were overwhelmed. Those who survived the massacre fled the city and scattered across the south underrail. Miners and metal workers looked to the north in search of work, while other craftsmen and merchants mostly settled in the stations nearby. As for the remaining foundry guard, it is said that a number of them made their way to the rail crossing and joined the protectorate army, while others formed small bands of their own and went their separate ways. Well, I had nothing to do with that. I didn't go through there, so yeah. Life in Core City went on as before. Caged by the city's high concrete walls and mesmerized by violent entertainment, workers, merchants, bandits, zoners, all struggled onwards, while oligarchs play their shadowy games. At least for a while, because of for because for one oligarch, however, the game got personal. Not long after Edmund was killed, an unfortunate accident befell Simon's son, Miland, as well. Knowing this was the work of Archibald's lackeys, the head of Cortex sent in a suicidal drone in attempt to end Knight's life. 
The attempt was unsuccessful, and despite Ed, Ed Storm's attempt to broker peace between them, the two organizations entered an open war, plunging Core City into chaos once again. One organization thrived in this chaos, the Silver Hand, formed from the Zone Rats gang and led by Gorski, who, led G uh, who left SGS to pursue his ambition of taking control of Core City. Though met with fierce opposition from the establishment, from the established oligarchs, the organization still survived, and due to, the, to enjoying the general support of zoners and other poor inhabitants of the city, managed to carve out a small piece of Core City for itself. I think maybe we could have done more things there. So where is this? Is this university? No. I don't know what this is. Hmm. Though they suffered a setback through the destruction of Epion Lab, the Protectorate still made a major advancement in the south when it took control of rail crossing. And though the free drones remained a nuisance, the Superior Intelligence Agency of the Protectorate managed to stay one step ahead of them. Okay, this is Protectorate stuff. I, we've never been in there. These guys are all dead, though. Now, not the guys outside, but the guys... Yeah, there's guys inside. I don't know exactly what happened here, but yeah. Once the Protectorate soldiers managed to crack the heavy gate and enter the Institute, they found none alive among the carnage. All the bodies of the dead faceless were gone, and all the tortoise lay where they fell. Except for one. Aidan's body was never found. Finally, killing Harmon Stravos left remaining Rasafors in disarray. After Chort was destroyed, they were swarmed by the rampaging Chortlings and slaughtered to the last. The Chortlings, so that's what we saw. They weren't beasts. That's what we saw. Hmm, okay. Under various leadership, SGS fostered good relationships with the Protectorate, and I don't, I didn't click that. Not long after, SGS became an official part of United Stations. Not everyone was happy with the direction SGS took. Most of Gorski's followers and even some neutral left the station, while Gorski himself denounced Vera and declared himself her enemy. That'd be a bad enemy to have if he controls Core City. I doubt he will ever control Core City. As for yourself, you decided there are more important things than managing a station and that your destiny lies e elsewhere. You boarded a train that took you to the far north of to Hexagon, where you hoped you'd find Ram Umbra again. Having retrieved their precious artifact, the Faceless retreated back into the depths from which they came. You never discovered the purpose or meaning of the medallion they gave you. Yeah. Probably a tracking thing. Underrail. More questions raised than answered. But I kinda knew that was gonna happen. Yeah, you need to replay this game and I, there, there's a lot of stuff that it could have done and we didn't. Um, and uh, yeah, I, it was a blind playthrough. Uh, it was, uh, ex I was expecting to miss a lot of stuff, to be honest. But I enjoyed my time very, very much, except for the boss battle. The boss battle was really tough. I didn't like that. It's too tough. It's too hard. It should, mm, yeah. But the puzzle was, was really cool. I really liked the puzzle, but the boss battle is too hard. Uh, but I did it. I did it. But the next time I'm, I'm gonna play this game, not on the channel, though, but I'm gonna start probably right away, a new campaign with a side character, although not right away because I need to research and see what kind of character that would be. Uh, yeah, making characters. Making characters in this game, it requires knowledge, metagame knowledge, and then, yeah. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this Let's Play. It's been a blast. This game has definitely surprised me from what I was expecting, although the, f the focus on combat is a little bit too much at certain points. I would have preferred a few more explorational facility facility is not the word I guess explorational anyway I would like a little bit more just you know you seeing what you can see you can find and tr tracking down mysteries rather than just killing a bunch of enemies which is fun but after a while it just uh, well it's a good thing that I went with the other system I'll just say that but yeah it's been a blast thank you guys so much for watching uh, it's I I I I, I can't thank you enough for all the reception. You guys seem to like this game very, very much. And through 120 episodes, is it? I think it is. Um, it's it's still it's so good to have you guys here as just a, a first episode. Thank you so much. I can't I can't thank you enough. And uh, yeah. So for now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Underrail. Again, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, if you have anything to say, to tell me tell me what you feel about the game down below in the comments. Uh, like the video as well if you enjoyed it. But above all, above everything else, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye. Not next episode. Why did I say next episode?
some other video. That's what I meant. Yeah. Bye-bye, guys.